worship service today. Today is Trinity Sunday. It's also Peace with Justice Sunday. God has a sense of humor. And so we welcome you to make sure that uh, you are with us, you are loved by us, and we care about you. And so welcome to worship today. In the way of our uh, finances, thank you all very much for your contributions. We do have a new way of uh, receiving those funds. And I wanted to let you know, because there are no transaction fees and no fees that come to us because of our transactions. And so please send your contributions. Go online to epaumc.org. Look for e-giving. E-giving. And so we ask you to help us uh, even if you give just a few dollars each month or each week, uh, we would appreciate it because all is helpful. So let us take a moment uh, out of our busy schedules to relax, to breathe deeply, and to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Take a deep, cleansing breath. Let it out slowly. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Let the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you in this moment. No one has ever seen God love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. Let us pray. Creator God, you continue to make order of the world, to enter the chaos of our existence, and to remind us that all you have made is indeed very good. May we remember your call to be agents of your goodness, of your creative power, and of your restorative presence. May we remember your call for us to go into the world and through our lo loving lives, compel others to follow in the way of your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our prayer for Peace with Justice Sunday. From self-righteousness that will not compromise and from selflessness that gains by the oppression of others. O Lord, o Lord deliver Lord. us from the lust for money or power that drives to kill. O Lord, deliver us from trusting in the weapons of war and mistrusting the counsels of peace. O Lord, deliver us from hearing, believing, and speaking lies about other nations and other people. O Lord, deliver us from suspicions and fears that stand in the way of reconciliation. O Lord, deliver us from words and deeds that encourage discord, prejudice, and hatred from everything that prevents us from fulfilling your promise of peace. O Lord, deliver us. Amen. And now I'll invite uh, the children up for today's message. Welcome. Yeah. 
Today's lesson is all about Trinity Sunday. And Trinity Sunday is about God in three forms. And so we know God as the Creator. And God is ever present with us. And then God made His Son, Jesus. To be with us so that we would see God here on earth. And after Jesus left, God left us with the Holy Spirit. The three are actually one. As we look around different aspects of the church, we see different forms of three. And each time that we see that, we think of the three and one together. I want you to look at the flame. When we put the three together. They become one. And that's what Trinity Sunday is all about. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for being with us in all forms. Bless us as we go through our lives that we might continue to learn about your love. And each day, bless our children, help them to grow and prosper and learn more about your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And I did that without burning the church down. <laughs>
others. Every passion that makes for war, all in generous judgment, all promptings of self-assurance, all presumptuous claims. Grant us insight to recognize the needs and aspirations of others and remove our suspicions and misunderstandings that we may honor all people in Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh God, we give you thanks for all the many gifts that you have given each one of us. We thank you for life on this earth. We thank you that you provide for us even when we don't even realize that we are in need. We give you thanks for answered prayers. And we pray for all those that are on our prayer list. For Bob and Cindy and Gloria and Michael and George and all the others that go unnamed. We pray for the families of all those that have been called home to be with you even in the midst of violent circumstances. Bless the families and the friends and bless our nation. Help us to be truly in unity with you. Regardless of our religion, regardless of our theologies and our practices, help us to be of one accord. Oh God, you know us better than we know ourselves. God, you are a God of action, and we confess to you our reluctance to act. We often become so preoccupied with our own lives and the acquisition of material goods that we neglect to the sharing and teaching of the good news of Jesus Christ. Our hearts and minds wander from your word and will, and thus we do not listen to your call to baptize and teach in Jesus' name. We lack focus and dedication in our outreach to others. We leave discipleship to others. Light a fire under us, God, the fire of your Holy Spirit. Move our feet, hands, and hearts into actions that witness to you. Give us words to, of promise and hope, and hope to speak. Use us to bring others to the waters of baptism. Remind us again and again that in our witness, and serving. The Lord Jesus is with us always. Which we pray in his name, the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
as God has given so much to us. Many of you have submitted your offerings, and so we give thanks, and let us pray our prayer of gifts and dedication. Most loving God, we give you thanks for all your mercies toward us in our world. Accept the gifts we offer this day, so they may be used to your glory and to do your saving will. Lead and shape our lives, time, resources, and talent, so that we may serve you wherever we are. May we glorify you in all in our workplaces, homes, congregations, and communities. Give us joy in our teaching, baptizing, and witnessing. In the name of the one who calls us to teach and baptize, Jesus Christ our Lord. Our gospel lesson is Matthew 28, verses 16, 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in the Lord, in heaven and earth, has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples all, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always till the very end of the age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. In the reading of the scripture, may your word be heard. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God because you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today's text is taken from the book of Psalm, the 8th chapter, another Psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, you have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what a what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet all the flocks and herds, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. This hymn of celebration of God's glory and the God-given dignity of human beings. This work cries of the weakness of babies, but the silence of enemies. God cares about the smallest of humans. 
Many of our problems are rooted in low self-esteem. That we don't have great worth. We may have been involved in abusive situations, not listened to, not cared about. This scripture tells us that God cares for us. God knows us. God has put all these things before us, has given us power to do the right thing. God even hears those little babies and cares about them just like He cares for each of us. Our responsibility is to care as well, to listen to their cries. Oh yes, we have rule over all those other living things, the animals, the birds, and, and the fish. But God has given us the ability to communicate with one another, the ability to love one another, to care about God's creation. And so that's what we are called to do. You see, we've gone through some difficult times. We've been challenged to the point of deterioration of our towns and communities, which has robbed us of how we feel about ourselves and others. We have to come to grips with God's blessings and God's gifts. That God has helped us and given us the insight for our own self-esteem. So that we can perceive ourselves in the proper manner. Unfortunately, many individuals have a tendency to hold us back to not care about us, to not hear our cries, especially in a time of the need for justice. And so we cry out and demonstrate and protest, which is a part of our responsibility to let others know that things aren't right. All we have to do is to look back at history and find all the different Problems and associated with people not being treated fairly and justly. This week I was told about a situation many years ago. Matter of fact, it was 99 years ago this past weekend. May the 31st and June the 1st in the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I had never heard about that situation until the news informed me several days ago. The fact that there was a, not only a riot, but a massacre in 1921. That because of a simple misunderstanding and the media not giving the total truth, there was not only a riot, but a massacre. An entire community destroyed because of a misinterpretation about two teenagers, one of which was a person of color. You see, those pieces of history that we are not told in our history books come back to haunt us. You see, what happened was a shoeshine boy went to the bathroom on the top floor of a building and the elevator operator was of European descent 
And apparently, in that process of him going up and coming back down, they had an encounter. We don't know exactly what it was. It was assumed that it may have been something so simple as him stepping on her foot or bumping into her on his way out of the elevator. And she screamed. In that process, somebody overheard her scream and assumed that he had done something totally inappropriate to her beside stepping on her foot or bumping into her. Well, in that process, word got out. And so they had to move the young man who they put under arrest and put him in the top of top floor of the courthouse. Because the people in the community were upset. And so the people in his own community came and wanted to protect him. And the authorities sent them away. They were fewer in number than the European Americans that came and wanted to lynch him. In that process, word got out in the streets and instead of going after the young man, they went after his community. Now, his community was considered the Wall Street, the Wall Street of that town. That there were numerous striving businesses that were people of color. There was great industry. And those that were upset destroyed it. And so, the statistics aren't accurate in terms of how many people died, but we know that there were over a thousand homes that were burned and destroyed. Those lessons of misunderstandings of people not communicating properly and making assumptions to the point where it kills people and destroys communities. That's downright scary. Our responsibility is to communicate fairly and truthfully with one another. That when we are hurt, we need to respond and do it in a loving fashion. Not to destroy buildings and communities, not to destroy people, but to communicate God's love. One of the most powerful things that happened this week for me was when a friend of mine sent me a text message indicating that he cared enough about me and how I was feeling in the midst of all the problems going on within our country. How many of you contacted someone that you care about and had discussions relative to race relations? How many of you showed your love to others and didn't just sit on your hands and not say anything. How many of you have gone out and shown your love, have demonstrated in the streets or have donated food for the needy? How many of you have shown that God loves you and that you love God's people? that you are willing to communicate and care about each other, and especially those that are hurting the most. Oh, many of you would say, make statements about, I'm not racist, I have a black friend. Or something else 
along those lines without truly understanding what that means. We've got to be careful about the language we use, but we also have to have a mindset of grace. I know that people are going to make mistakes, and people are going to say things by mistake. But I know that God is calling me to love them just the same. That I need to help educate them. That I need to help them grow and learn and prosper. And so even though people make statements about to me that are very hurtful and are like cutting me, I have to be bigger and stronger and to teach so that God's love comes through. How majestic is God's name in all the earth? God wants us to be loving, peaceful people with justice so that the world can grow and strive and be what it's called to be. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the blessings that you have given every one of us. We thank you for the opportunity to prayer because prayer is an orienting act. We need to discover who we are when we realize where we are. Help us to be your people, to show your love even to our enemies, not to destroy one another, but to simply love and communicate your love. Help us to truly be your people. We pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. As we leave one another today, I challenge you to check on your friends, to call those that are hurting, those that may be injured, those that are in need. Go forth in peace and love, showing God's justice, so that the world will know how great God is and how magnificent is His name. Be safe. Take care of one another. Go in peace.